by Topwater Johnny, and in this bass fishing video, I'll be reviewing two topwater frogs sent in by subscribers. Which one would you fish? Let's go. Whoa, there we go. Yeah. Woo, holy cow, folks. Topwater Johnny here, man. This is what we came here for. Look at that. Get back here. Look at that right there. That's the kind of beast that we came here for. There we go. Woo! At that one. Hooked. Hey everybody, it's Topwater Johnny here. I want to welcome you to the next video here. And as you saw in that video intro, I've got two frogs, two topwater frogs that were sent to me by subscribers of the channel, as well as people I'm connected to on Instagram. And so since I had these two very unique frogs, I wanted to do a review of those frogs first, and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts, and then I want to definitely get your thoughts in the comments. So please like, subscribe to the channel, and let's watch the review. All right. Okay, let's go here. Our first frog we're looking at is the Huck Frog. At least that's the name that was given on it. It is 2.4 inches in length. As you can see, it has a single hook here. Kind of has those short kind of rubbery tail right here. Also, as you can see, this is basically a basic paint job plastic here. It's got one stout hook that runs through the entire body of it. As you can see, it's kind of got some little grating on the bottom here. To help it slide across cover, it's got its keeled weight in the back where the hook comes out at. In the back here, as you can see, there is really nowhere for the water to come out other than right here at the very bottom where it shoots out. The actual frog itself is relatively soft in nature and kind of expands back up again. And finally, as I said before, this frog really is streamlined just to go up and down in the water column. It really doesn't do any kind of walk the dog, but goes straight up and down. And this is what the bass will see and target, as well as potentially snakefish. So there you go, the hook frog. All right. All right, everybody, here is the dangle frog here by EOBS Eggings. Eggings, that's the name they're saying. About two... 0.8 inches in length right here as you can see has a very aerodynamic body right here and this particular lure just starting right in the front of it instead of having that leader in the front that you tie onto it has actually kevlar rope that's tied onto the very front of it and glued in and the reason that it is is because this lure is designed to sit actually bottom down in the water and be dangled in the water column the hooks are super sharp hooks right here, super sharp frog hooks in the back. There's a blade in the back to attract the bass. Also, as you can see where the water would normally come out, that's all glued down in the back because this lure is designed to sit keel up like this right here and just kind of dangle up and down in the water and to create a disturbance and to create hits. So this right here is the actual dangle frog. All right. Okay, we're back, and you've had a chance to like look at both of these particular lures. I'm going to start with this one right here. This was uh, the Huck Frog, as you can see right here. It was actually sent to me by Brandon Schmelbeck, and on Instagram, he calls himself Biosyn Lures. And like I said before, it's called the actual Huck Frog. It's uh, made by Hybrid Lures Official. And when I look at this lure right here, as you can see, this one reminds me of a more of a snakehead type lure because of the single hook right here. Very short tails in the back right here. And one thing about this particular lure is it does float high in the water column. So what that means is when you throw this into heavy cover, it's going to sit up really high. So you can throw this into the thickest of the thickest and then bring it out. Now, a couple of things to think about when you're bringing it out here. And I wrote, I wrote some notes down about movement, where to fish it and then also speed. When it comes to movement, this one doesn't have a really any walk the dog to it. So it's more of an up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way back to you. And you're really just going up and down, up and down. And with that white belly there, you're hoping that the bass will key on it or even the snake has a key on it 
and attack it. As you can see, there is the actual weight in the back right here. So that's why it's definitely weight bearing in the back and constantly pushing up and down, up and down. The water is dispersed right through the little hole right there. Now, where you fish this, definitely heavy cover, shallow heavy cover would be a great place to fish this near the bank's edges because like I said before, snakeheads and bass that are patrolling along the edges would strike at this because of the fast movement and it would remind them of a frog or potentially a bluegill. Also, when you're reeling this one in, you're popping your reel up and down, so you're getting more of a fast action to create a clear disturbance on the water. So that's how I would look at this particular huck frog here. Now, the second frog that we're going to look at here is truly a unique frog right here. And this particular frog that we're looking at here is called the dangle frog. At least that's the name that was given. It was sent in to me by a gentleman by the name of Samuel Daniel. And his actual Instagram handle is Midwest underscore Bass Assassin. So that's Bassin. So B-A-S-S-A-S-S-I-M. So Bass Bassin. So Bass Assin. So that's kind of what his name is for his um, Instagram name here. As I said before, 2.8 in length. But things about this one that are truly unique. The front right here. This right here is actual Kevlar. So they've got Kevlar in the front of this one right here. Instead of the general like leader grab right there, they've got Kevlar right there. And what their goal is with this particular lure is when it comes to movement is to actually, when you cast it out, this won't be a, a lure that will be actually going really fast across the water because they put a little, little bit, little bitty um, willow in the back here. Notice the tail and notice the, the frog hook is actually glued in. The reason they've done this is because they want this to keel like this all the time. So that when you are fishing it from this Kevlar right here, it's going up and down, not like up and down like that. It's going up and down and it's actually dangling in the water column as it comes back to you. It's dangling along the way. So when you think about the movement, the movement is much slower where do you fish this at? Heavy cover, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to target pockets in the cover. So like open lily pad areas where the bats could ambush up or if they've made nests and they've made little spots in the water, you want to dangle this just over them. Think about when the spawn is coming along and they're defending the area. This is the kind of lure that would literally be dropped in there and it would just dangle like this and they would see this part right here and that would trigger them. Also, the lure itself, very soft. You're getting all hook if they bite into that. They're getting all the hook. But it's designed to kind of sit in this angle most of the time in the water column and to be brought back slowly across the water and across the cover. So wherever there are pockets where you can see bass are nesting or you see them sitting tight and holding in a spot, this kind of lure goes in there and it kind of just dangles above them and aggravates them and creates that reaction strike. So that's what I have observed in these two lure, this actual lure right here. And this right here is what they call the dangle frog. As I said before, this right here, they have actually glued it and it's made, and this lure actually in itself, as you can see, is made out of silicone versus PVC, the normal stuff that frogs are made out of. This is made out of silicone as well, and it is totally waterproof because of the way that they have designed it and they've sealed it. They've, they've glued it in the front, they've glued it in the back to make it totally water sealed as well. Doesn't walk the dog, but its goal is to trigger bites by dangling over the bass's head. So there you go. Okay, and here they both are right here. As before, I wanted to also remind you that this one, the actual manufacturer is OBS Eggston. So these are both Japanese lure or Chinese lures right here in themselves here. And each one to me is a, its own unique design and its own unique purpose. This one is designed to dangle. This one is designed to scurry. This one right here has got a Kevlar rope. This one right here does not. It's a traditional hookup, as you can see. This one right here is designed to be keel bottom down here to kind of pop across the water. 
and move across and push out water. This one right here is glued in, not designed to have any water get in there, but also not designed to be scurried across the water aggressively either. This one right here is definitely a more faster lure that would move across the water. This one right here is much more of a slower moving lure across the water. So each one, in my opinion, has a place. But the question is, which one would you actually want to use? If you were given both of these lures here and you knew based on what Topwater Johnny just said, which lure where you're fishing at do you think you'd have the most success catching bass on? So for me, I'm going to have to find out. Eventually, I will find out how each of these work in the water. But for right now, the question is back to you guys. Which one of these two lures right here would you fish with? Would you fish with the Huck Frog, which is called, once again, Huck Frog? That could be number one. Or the Dangle Frog, which is number two. So they've got the Huck Frog, the Dangle Frog. In the comment section below, you can put down there one for Huck Frog. You can put two for the actual Dangle Frog. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think about each of these frogs. Have you seen them before? And just overall, what are your thoughts? Okay, everybody. Well, there you go. I just wanted to share with you some frogs that were sent in by subscribers. And of course, I want to thank all of my subscribers for always telling me about new lures and sharing with me lures that they found and discovered. And of course, if you want to send something into the show, my mailing information is always in the description box. The new t-shirts, as I said before, that are out right now, those go to the description box, click on the link, check out the shirts that I've got. I'm rolling out here as well. Also, on Monday, got another bass fishing top water video coming out that I know you guys are going to really enjoy. Check it out right here, everybody. That's the Savage Gear Prop Walker right here. Notice it's got, that little, got those spinners in the back. Or it can be locked down and just be a stick bait right here. Got a great video coming out on Monday on this lure. Was putting in a lot of work with it. So definitely tune in on Monday because you'll see this lure in action. As you can see, I already made a modification in the back. But this lure right here catches big bass little bass and everything in between so it is actually a really great lure not sure if anyone is out there has this lure but it's been out in the market for a while and it's just a great little lure so i definitely would recommend it and just let me know have you seen it before what's your thoughts about it okay and finally of course as always i just want to say thank you guys i really appreciate your comments and also i really do need your help here as we move into the new year here my goal is to continue to grow and one of the things when it comes to youtube is the like button the more likes i can get on my videos the more youtube will push my videos so if you're watching these videos and you're enjoying yourself just go ahead and hit the like button don't forget to hit the like button because that helps youtube's algorithm know that johnny's doing something good and that others should know about it. So hitting the like button is very important. Subscribing to the channel is very important. Also, because I do the giveaways, and for some of you guys out there, you've seen it now, I do the text notification, and I alert people when I drop stuff now. So I'm trying to do all of these things to grow the channel. And then also, please, as always, watch the videos all the way through because that helps the algorithm as well. All of these things help me grow and be able to share more of what I know and understand about top water fishing with more people and i know with the people that are with me now you guys have been with me and i appreciate you and if you'll do those things that'll help us grow and allow me to do more for you guys in every video that i do so once again i want to thank you guys for watching this video here please like subscribe to the channel make sure you hit the notification make sure you're part of the text alert and i just want to tell you that phrase as always keep your line tight because when they hit those top water lures, especially lures that are sometimes unique and different, it's going to be a big bite. All right.